or slope. So m equals the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. I write this down all the time so I don't forget. That's why I do it. As I start to plug things in, I get the limit as h is approaching 0. On the bottom, I'm going to have an h. I look at that first set of instructions, this stuff right here. And what that says is, look at my 2x squared minus 3 and shove in x plus h. Or in other words, this is what I see. In the blue. What goes in the parentheses? No. X plus h. Because it tells you, shove in x plus h. Then there's another instruction. The other instruction is talking about this stuff. Or in other words, write down the function. I mean, the function is given to you right here. That's f of x. So you just write it down. 2x squared minus 3. But don't forget about the brackets, because what's going to end up happening is if you do, you'll forget the minus sign distribution. So I highly recommend writing that. Once you've plugged in whatever the F instructions are telling you, it's all about algebra after that. So now, as I start to work out some of this algebra stuff, uh, I have the limit as H is turning into zero. And then I can't really do all that stuff in my head at once, so I'm going to go with 2 times parentheses x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Notice that's the same thing we got last time we tried this problem. And then minus 3. This stuff again right here is this. And that's from the, the light blue. And then from the purple, I distribute the negative sign. Thank you. So I have minus 2x squared plus 3. And that's all over h. So in case you were trying to follow, this is all of the light blue. And this was all of, oh shoot, I missed one. Sorry. And this is all of the purple. I still have to simplify just a little bit because the 2 is on the outside of the parentheses. So as I simplify, I'm going to have the limit. As h is turning into 0, on the top I get 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared minus 3 minus 2x squared plus 3 all over h. And again, you should see things that go away Anything that doesn't have an H should be going away. The X squared terms are gone. And the negative 3 and the positive 3 are gone. And left over are only H terms. So now I've got the limit as H is turning into 0. On the top, I have 4hx plus 2h squared all over h. Should I shove in my 0? Why? Can't divide by 0. So the strategy is always the same when we get to this point. We want to factor out that h, and that's why we do this to simplify. So we have the limit as h is turning into 0. But this time, I factor an h out of the top, and I get 4x plus Nope, sorry. 2h all over h. And my h's go away. So when I simplify, I get the limit as h is turning into 0 of 4x plus 2h which means I can shove the 0 in for the h, which means I have 2 times 0, which means it's gone. So my answer is just 4x 
4x. And we did answer the question because in the beginning, they said for x comma f of x, meaning we don't want you to plug any numbers, we just want the generalization. Down below, what you'll see are a bunch of different ways that you can talk about what derivative looks like. So in calculus, they use a whole bunch of different symbols to talk about derivative. Um, probably the most common ones, and they have whatever they wrote here, but I would tell you that when I taught it, sometimes they just talk about f, what they call prime with a little mark. Sometimes they'll write it as f prime of x. Sometimes they'll talk about it as y prime. Sometimes they'll call it dy dx. And sometimes they will say d dx of something. And in this box, they might put a y or an f of x. And sometimes they just talk about it as capital D little x, or in other words, the derivative with respect to x. So there are lots of different ways to represent that you're taking a derivative. Uh, and what happened is, if you know anything about um, calculus, there were two people credited with finding or discovering or creating calculus at the same time. One was Isaac Newton and one was Leibniz. And so both created or discovered calculus at the same time. And one of the reasons why we have different notations is each person had their own way of describing what was going on. And so that's why there's so many different ways to talk about derivative as far as symbols go. But just so you're aware, they might use any of those symbols. So as you see this word derivative, I just want you to think of the word slope. And we already learned about that. We already talked about, hey, the slope is m equals, oh, wait, I don't want to use m anymore because we're using the word derivative. So instead of that, I'm going to use y prime or one of those things I was just talking about. And that's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So this is really the same thing as, I cross it out of course, but it's the same thing as m, your slope. So derivative slope, I want you to understand those are the same. All right, time's up. First instruction says, shove in x plus h into my function. As I write that down, what I'll see is a bracket. There is something being squared plus something minus 2. Because that's what my function says. Something squared plus something minus 2. What am I shoving in that? X plus H. X plus H. Uh, I shouldn't forget, of course, that over here there is the limit as h is approaching 0, and of course, underneath there's an h and there's a minus sign here. Second instruction says, write down the function. So in this bracket, I write down the function. OK, let's, let's work with the algebra then. So I have my limit as my h is turning into 0. And in the red, I will have x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. That stuff came from here. And then I still have my plus x plus h minus 2. That was all in the red. In the blue, the minus sign in front means change all the signs, so I get minus x squared minus x plus 2. And don't forget, we still have that this thing is all over h. So looking ahead, as I write this stuff down, I still have my limit. h goes to 0, but now I see that all of the 
non-h stuff like x squared and minus x squared go away, that my positive x and my negative x go away, and my negative 2 and my positive 2 also go away. So left over on the top, I only have 2hx plus h squared plus h. And on the bottom, uh, I have h. And what this means is I still don't want to plug in the h that's turning into 0 yet because my denominator is going to turn into 0 if I do that. So I look to the numerator and I factor out an h. So the limit as h goes to 0 of, pull out an h, and notice how there are three terms. So left over I will have 2x plus h plus 1. And that's all over h. Do not forget about the 1. The h's, as they have so many times, disappear because h divided by h is 1. And what I'm left with is the limit as h is approaching 0 of 2x plus h plus 1. And what this is saying is that this h now can become 0, which means that my answer is just 2x plus 1. So we kept talking about this h thing. I kind of wanted to show you what it is before we do our last problem. 